So every once in a while, I get an itch to learn a new programming language. And it's been a while since I touched Go, and I wanted to try to, like, revisit that. I think at one point, I was going on a Go binge for, like, a week or a couple days. I learned some things, but at this point, I think I've forgotten everything I learned. But I hear good things about Go. Um, it was either me diving into Go or diving into Rust, and Rust just seems a little bit more over my head than Go does. And people say great things about Go. It's simple. So I'm going to try to just build live... I don't know, like a, a REST API with Go and maybe just slowly add on features until I run out of energy. Me and my family have had COVID for the past week, so I'm not feeling 100%, which is why I haven't really been posting much content. But let's just go ahead and try this out. So so when you have an empty directory, I believe you can say go mod init. And you have to type in like a name of your module. Um, if you have like a Git repo, I think they recommend you put like the URL to your like repository and your username. I don't really know. I'm just going to go ahead and say my project. And that'll create a Go mod file. This is basically like the package lock when it comes to um, NPM development. It has like your module name and it has all your like Go dependencies and your Go version. I'm on Go version, uh, obviously, 1.2.2.0. So if you're following along, that's the version I'm using. So what we're trying to do is we want to build a simple REST API. And one of the libraries that I've read about is Gin. I'm sure there's other libraries out there. So leave a comment if you have a favorite Go REST API library you like to use. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this, and I'm going to go ahead and make a new main.go file. Is that is that how you kind of do it? Okay, so paste that in, and it's failing to find this import. I think you can do go git with this URL, so I can say go git, type that in. So now I have like all of these dependencies set up, which if I ever were to come back to this project at a later point, those are all kind of locked down to a specific version. So let's test this out to run this. I think it's just go run, and then you type in the name of your file. Okay, and uh, I think it's running. Already getting some warnings. I don't know what this is about. You trusted all proxies. That is not safe. We recommend you set a value. Probably the way I ran go run, it probably needs a certain flag or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it really matters. Um, but let's test this out. So the CFR application is running. I have Thunder Client, which is what I'm going to be using for kind of hitting that API endpoint. And it looks like the example had a ping endpoint. So if I just go ahead and invoke that, we get a request that hits our locally running Go server. And we get a response back that says Pong. Okay, so that was pretty easy to get a REST API going um, with this gin library. Let's try to dive in more and understand like what's going on here. So it kind of looks like Express.js where you, you know, you specify the method, the HTTP method, and then you specify an endpoint. Can I figure out how to get path parameters so like let's say there was like a user's endpoint and then we have like a user id by the way i have been trying to use a new ai called cody ai I'm, i don't know how it ranks up against copilot or if there's anything else out there let me know leave a comment i'm just trying to find a better ai tool most of the times i try to use ai in vs code it just sucks like the suggestions are off it doesn't seem to even understand my code base when it gives suggestions and I end up just turning it off. But when it comes to learning new languages and libraries, like I think it's very useful, especially like Go or Rust or something. So what I want to do is I want to see if I can say edit the code and I want to say change this to a user's endpoint that takes in a path parameter for the user ID. Okay, so let's see if I can figure out this gen library, refactor my code and then we get the parameter here, and then it should send back Pong for user ID. So let's try that out. All right, so one thing I noticed is that when I save my Go file, it doesn't automatically restart my um, my Go program. Maybe there's a way to like get that live reloading set up, because the developer experience right now is uh, not on par with Node.js. Let's just go ahead and say, like, hello, and we get back Pong from hello users. Cool. So it looks like this is how you can set up path parameters, and this is how you can get them from your bin context. I love when I use a framework that's very similar to something that I already know, like most Express.js looks just like this too. I want to figure that out. I'm going to go here. I'm going to say, how do I enable live reload? How do I enable live reload when developing a gin web server? Because I think that's something that I need to have set up. Gin Rus. So I'm gonna install this one. Let's see if that'll help us out. Let's run that. And then something called Air. Why does it want to sign in? It should already be signed in. I'm gonna skip that package. I don't know why it's asking me to sign in. It shouldn't be that serious. 
I have to make an air tomal file. Air T O M L. Okay. I bet you this will fail because I didn't install the other thing. Um, so now you can just run air, run your application using air. Of course, it doesn't work. Just binary name with your binary name. Um, do I have a binary name? Maybe if I actually went to the air git repo, it'll like tell us how to do this. Is there like a getting started? To install, you run this. Okay, so instead of using go git, I probably should use go install air because it's more of like a a binary that you have to install, and then I should be able to run it, maybe. Install via, uh, for less typing, you could add alias air here uh, to my bash, okay. So add that alias in there, go ahead and source it. And then if I type air, it'll work. No such file or directory, okay, well. I don't know, it still can't find it, so uh, I'm gonna try running this. Web dev Cody go. And you know, let me try closing out the terminal and just like opening a new one. No, this is why I hate programming. There we go. Sometimes I hate programming. You waste two hours because you don't have something set up correctly. Um, so does this work? My binary name was set to main. So now if I go here and hit the endpoint, it works. If I go back and save it to what is up, save that, hit it. It, uh, it it reloaded. It was kind of actually pretty slow compared to what I'm used to with Node.js, but I guess it works. Yeah, I guess let me know if there's a better way to do this because that was actually kind of slow in my opinion. Like, usually with Nodemon, it's like instant. My Express Server will be restarted instantly, but I guess it has to compile my binary down and then it has to, like, rerun it. Uh, so what are some other cool things we could maybe do now that we have a really basic REST API? Maybe we can just do, like, an in-memory key value lookup or something. Um... So let's, instead of users, we're going to change this to a post and we'll say like key. This will be a key and then these will be keys. And the idea is we want to store the value passed in into the key inside some type of key value map. And then I'll do another one. We'll say like uh, r.git and then we're going to do just on slash key. Just copy this whole signature because I don't know what I'm doing. Do this. And then we want to actually get so to do get the value from the map using the key and return it. Okay, so in both cases we get a key. We, de we define a key variable and we pull that out from the parameters that are passed in. Well, in this case we don't have a key, so let's add it. Okay. All right, what am I doing? What am I doing? So up here inside of main, I'm guessing there's something that we need to define. So I'll say like define a key value map variable we can use in these methods below. Is that how you do it? Key value map is a map. And then we're going to go ahead and um, we'll call it a store. And then we're going to go ahead and say, if it's a get, we want to get the value from the store. So I'll say store. And is there a way to do this? Simple as that, maybe. And then over here, we're going to go ahead and say, let the store of the key equal to post form value. I doubt that's the way you can get the actual JSON body. So let's see, get the JSON body from the post request. Let's try that, I guess. The request body. Should probably return some type of status. Okay. Pass it to a string, I guess. If there's an error, I'm using AI all the way. I don't know what the heck I'm doing right now. Let's try that. Okay, so now we got a hopefully a simple little 
key value store that we can hit. And so first of all, the idea is we should be able to do a post request to key of name. You can, you can put whatever you want here. But in the payload, I guess I'll go to body. Uh, I'll go to JSON. And we're going to go ahead and just say... We'll change this to um, Bob. And I'll say age. 20. We send this. What happens? It says stored. That's pretty cool. Now, if we were to copy this... Is there a way to clone this? Probably not. Um, let's go back to Thunder Client and let's just go ahead and make another request. Do this. And get the key. Get back to JSON. Cool, so it did store the, the stringified JSON. Um, I guess when we do a get request though, it should probably actually convert this. Is there a way to like unmarshal this? Um, return the unmarshaled value of this key. Go ahead and delete that and see what AI tells us to do. That doesn't feel right. All right, now it's a tricky part. I need to take that stored JSON string that's stored inside of this like key value lookup. But then when I return it, I want it to be in JSON format. For some reason, this is not like I have to like figure out a way to unmarshal it or marshal it. So let's try to go here. I'll say, actually, let's just try doing this. I'm gonna say edit code and I'll say, uh, convert the, convert the store key from a JSON stringified string to a, an actual JSON response. I mean, I don't think that's what we're going for, but we can try it. So like, I think first I want to store it again, get it back. Yeah, that's definitely not what we're going for. Um, using GoGen, how do I unmarshal some JSON, stringified JSON and return it as a JSON object? Looks like there's a JSON unmarshal. Maybe we should use that. Let's grab all this. By the way, this is actually how I kind of learn new things. Like I just play around with stuff. I don't go and watch a bunch of tutorials and like read a bunch of stuff. I just, right now I use AI, let AI guide me. If it doesn't get me to where I need it, then I'll dive into docs and I'll do Stack Overflow. I think it's a really good way to learn. It's, um, it's the most efficient for me. It might not work for everyone else, but it seems like it's paid off in the long run for me. So it looks like instead of user, I'll just say like value. And I don't know what this would be. Is there like an any type in Go? It looks like you point some type of reference, like a pointer, to... Uh, I need to get the string out. So this would be store of key. So convert that to a byte array and then unmarshal it. That should take and put the unmarshal value into that value object. And then I return it here. There's an error, I throw it. Also, why is my stuff not like auto formatting when I save? Like, I feel like that's something that we should figure out how to get turned on because that's kind of annoying. Like the indentations all over the place. All right, let's try it again. Send it, there we go. So now I have like this little API that I could host and then anyone could just kind of like store whatever they want inside of my little key value lookup. And then other people can come back and grab it if they want to. So at this point, I like to do a recap and just kind of make sure I reinforce the things that I just played around with and like make sure I understand what's going on. So Jin is the web library that allows us to quickly create endpoints, listen to HTTP methods, get the requests from this context, get the, uh, the keys, uh, the parameters, I guess I should say, from the path. And using that library, we basically make an endpoint that allows us to store things into some arbitrary map here. But I think what we're saying here is we're defining a store variable, which is a type of map that takes a that's a string and it 
points to another string as its value. This kind of um, syntax for defining the map is kind of weird to me, um, but hey, I'm so used to TypeScript at this point. And then we use this make command, which I'm guessing is just allocating some like dynamic data structure, um, which I guess just behind the scenes can keep on uh, allocating more memory for you and grow and sh uh, shrink as needed. And we're just giving it the type here. So I guess that's just making a dynamically sizable map that you can store stuff into. And then when people start hitting this, I basically say, take the JSON data that came in, which in this case, it's a byte array. So if we wanted to, it might be more efficient to just like not do this conversion. So we'll store it as a byte array. And up here, we could probably change it to be a byte array, and this could also be a byte array. Sorry, this type syntax is just weird. But uh, so over here, now instead of having to cast it to a byte array, it's going to be a byte array. How much more performant is that? I don't know. But it's one less thing that you have to kind of loop over and convert to a string. So now I should be able to hit this Bob2, get it, and it actually crashed. Why did it crash? Oh, because I was hitting the wrong thing. So Bob2, there it is. That might be something fun to like stress test and see like how much faster if I did like millions of these requests, how much nanoseconds or microseconds this would save us um, to not have to keep on converting it to a string. This formatting is just, it's, it's weird. I need to fix this. Like why is this not formatting on save? Let's Google that. How do I make my VS Code editor auto format go when I save? Install the Go extension. Okay, I should have that. And then install Go Tools. I should have that already. Enable format on save, which I do. Okay, and then they're saying I can go to my configuration. And I think I can do this. Oh, the Go imports command not found. Run Go install. Okay, let's try running it, see what happens. Oh, I think it's because my formatter was set to prettier, maybe, and that's why it wasn't formatting. I think it's saying by default it uses go format, but if you wanted to change it to go import, you can change that. Uh, I'm okay with defaults. I'm not a very picky person about like how my stuff is saved. So let's just try to see if that changes anything at all. I don't know. It's still working. So, all right, there you have it. I'm a go expert now. If anyone wants to hire me as a go back and developer, go ahead, shoot me a, shoot me an email. But yeah, uh, I think that's as far as I'm going to take this video. If you don't know Go, maybe you watching me play around with Go taught you something new. Um, it's been fun playing around with it. Again, I'm just trying to branch out a little bit, learn some different languages. A lot of people really like Go, and I want to drink that Kool-Aid with everyone else. But anyway, if you guys uh, enjoyed watching me just screw around with learning how to write some REST API in Go, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. If there's something else you want me to take this further and try to build using Go, I can try to do that too. Um, and like always, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join. If you want to find a place to kind of hang out or talk to some other web developers. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.